Hi, I'm Justice Castro, and I'm the owner of Simply J Studios, and welcome to my YouTube channel. It's crazy to think that I'm starting a YouTube channel for photography. Never thought I would do that. But here we are! <laughs> As you can tell in the title, I may start a little bit of a controversial post, but whatever. I have had a lot of DMs asking me about how do you go about starting a photography business. Now, all these tips that I'm going to list off is just going to be a general explanation of the tips. I'm not going to deep dive into each of them because each of them can be a video in itself and I'll probably actually end up doing a video of each tip in its own little video. It'll just be easier. There's so much that you can cover in it. We'll just kind of cover the basics. These tips are more of what has helped me build my boudoir side, but I have done motherhood, birth photography, and family photography before this, and I learned how to build the ropes for that as well. So what the main thing is when you first start out, obviously you're trying to learn things. The best route to go is one, your camera. Surprise, I know, holy crap, she's talking about a camera. Um, I mean, you can do boudoir photography or photography without a camera. I don't know how that would work out for you, but go ahead and give it a shot and let me know how it goes. So tip one is invest in a camera. Now, it doesn't have to be super fancy. It doesn't have to be super expensive. Good starter cameras. I am a Canon girl, so I started out with a Canon T3. Yes, I started out with a Canon T3 Rebel series. Now this is a crop sensor and everything that we're getting into, I can dive down deeper. I would personally invest in like a cheaper full frame camera to be honest, because the limitations of your crop sensor are iffy. Now it's a good camera to learn on. So if you want to go ahead and start that direction, I would recommend a Rebel series for Canon. I can't really talk about any other brand because I don't use anything other than Canon. Sorry guys. That's just how it is. So I would definitely recommend building up your lenses from there. So the next tip that we're moving on to is shoot for free. Now, this is another one that people might be yelling at me for. Shooting for free is the best way to learn your camera, it's the best way to learn your settings aside from YouTube. I mean, you can go on YouTube and literally learn anything that you want, hence why you're here. I always recommend shooting for free just because you won't have that stress of a paying client on you, you will not feel like you're being pressured into making sure that it's perfect. And then if the shots don't turn out perfect, if they don't turn out correctly, you don't have to sit there and worry about refunding someone or dealing with that whole mess. I would recommend getting a hold of your friends, asking them if they would model for you. If you're going into boudoir aspect, sometimes you can't find people who are willing to do that because it's such an intimate and personal experience. The best way to go about that and learning poses and what looks right is use yourself. I use myself all the time. I learn new poses because I do them myself. It makes me be able to walk my clients through those poses step by step. And then I know exactly how they're supposed to look. I know how they feel. I know which direction I need them to be. And there you go. It's free. It's yourself. Invest in a tripod. It's like $10 at Walmart. Just practice. Practice is the best way to learn. You can watch all the YouTube videos you want. You can read about it all you want. You can learn and watch other people, but the best way to learn is doing it yourself. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Justice, I've done those two. I have a camera, I have practice. Now what? You are going to want to charge accordingly. Now, before you start charging, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer here. You need to figure out the legalities of everything. So you should probably talk to a lawyer and research in your state what you have to do to be a business and go that direction. Every state's different. Every state has different guidelines. Definitely dabble in that. Talk to a lawyer, talk to someone that knows those aspects. I am not gonna give advice on that because I am not a lawyer. I am not a legal person and I couldn't tell you what each state is. When I say charge accordingly, I mean you need to do your cost of doing business. Now, when you sit down and do your cost of doing business, I will probably make a whole new video for this one because there's a lot that breaks into it and I can dive deeper into it and probably like show you how to do it step by step. But essentially what you need to do is you need to figure out your monthly expenses, your monthly business expenses, how much you want to make and how much you have to set aside for taxes. 
and then go from there. You need to figure out how many clients you can take on to get to that level. All right, so what's the next step <laughs> is growing your clientele. Personally for me, Facebook is the biggest aspect of my business. That's where all of my business comes from. With me, I have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Now with Blue Door Photography, your Facebook groups are your gold. That's your bread and butter. That's where you're gonna spend most of your time. That's where most of your clients are gonna come from. My biggest thing with my group is to make sure I have a connection with each member that's in there. That is my brand. I am doing a personal experience. I am doing an intimate experience. So I need to make sure I know each girl on a personal level. So when they come into my studio, they already know me and they're already comfortable as soon as they walk in. Now, does the Facebook group work with other photographers? Yes, it does. I have seen other photographers that do newborn photography, family photography, and any other photography out there. They have a group and I've seen them blossom from it. Facebook groups are like the biggest marketing tactic right now because of the fact that sometimes Facebook pages, when you're running it, they don't push your stuff out as much because Facebook wants you to pay for people to see you. So at least that's in my experience. That's what I have learned. That's what I have noticed. The next thing is build a connection. What I mean by that is like, yeah, you can go off and build connections with vendors, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is you want to build a connection with your potential clients. So for me, that's in my Facebook group. I build those connections. I do a Facebook Live with them. I get them talking about random stuff. I don't post just about my work because I don't want them to keep on thinking that I'm constantly trying to sell them. I post stories about my life. I post behind the scenes. I post memes. I post interactive posts. I don't wanna feel like I'm constantly selling people, but then once it comes time to like do a sale or do a model call or anything like that, I go ahead and I'll like really hype up that and I'll start sharing a lot of my work and I'll start sharing a lot of like behind the scenes of sessions and all of that fun stuff. So I really get them excited and I really get them to build that connection with me. I have a bunch of girls that come in and say like, I was super nervous. I never thought about doing this before, but walking into here, like I know you, I feel like we're friends and I feel comfortable. Really let your work shine through and kind of get on a personal level. Let them know the real you. Don't put up a fake front because you feel like that's what they want to see. The next thing we are going to talk about is branding yourself. Now this can go anywhere along the lines of the first thing you do, it can go literally anywhere in this list, but branding yourself is super important. You want to know your brand identity you want to know your mission statement and you want to know why you are doing this. So branding yourself and knowing who your client is and knowing exactly what you're doing is important. When you brand yourself, it's because you need to know your brand identity. You want people to know like, oh, that's simply J Studios or oh, that's so-and-so photography. You want them to know who you are and what your brand looks like. But once you find what works for you and what you like the most, you'll be good. You'll be golden. That brings us to number seven is know your client. Now you might think, what do you mean? I do Bedore photography because I want to help build up women's confidence. I want to help the single mother that's over there trying to work her butt off, raising her child who feels down in herself and just really needs that uplift. Well, knowing your client and knowing who you want to work with and who you're targeting is really important because then it limits down exactly who you want. Know your client and know who you're talking to. It'll make it so much easier in your life. And number eight is do not pay attention to other photographers. Now, what I mean about this is that you do not want to focus on what other photographers are doing and stressing out. Like you might see another photographer that's fully booked and they're always talking about how they're booked and things like that, but you don't know how many clients that person takes on. So fully booked to them could be one client a week. Fully booked to them can be five clients a week. It doesn't really make a difference. Everyone runs their business differently. What works for you might not work for them. What works for them might not work for you. Their clients might gravitate towards them and your clients might gravitate towards you. There's no shortage of clients. So please, whatever you do, do not copy other photographers. Just stay in your lane and focus on 
your business because if you start focusing on other photographers' businesses, you're gonna drown yourself a little bit. You're gonna get overwhelmed and you're gonna be wondering what you're doing wrong when in reality, you might not be doing anything wrong. Now this one might work for you, it might not, it didn't work for me, but it's always worth throwing in there. So for this tip is to ask to assist another photographer. When I was looking to start out, I asked to assist another photographer and I got turned down so many times. I got turned down because they didn't want anyone shadowing them, they didn't want another photographer shadowing them, they already had an assistant, Whatever the case may be, I personally couldn't find anyone to shadow. So I had to learn everything on my own. Granted, I did take photography classes in high school, so that helped a lot. But for me, shadowing another photographer didn't happen. I wish it did, probably would have helped me a lot easier, but it didn't happen. If you have money and stuff like that already set aside for this, you can find mentors and you can go ahead and do mentoring lessons to figure out what you need to do. Find someone for like your camera settings. If you need to learn that, you can find someone on how to run your business. You can find someone on how to do your social media. There's so many options out there, but if you're looking for the free route, YouTube is probably the way to go and asking another photographer if it's okay for you to shadow them. Some of them might tell you that they do mentoring and that they like require a payment and stuff like that for it, which is completely fine. That's them, that's their business, and it's a good thing to do. Finding a mentor, seeing if you can shadow someone. If not, go ahead and keep practicing and YouTube it up. And then my final tip that I'm gonna leave you with is know that it's a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work for one person to run a photography business. So you have to be all in this for it. And honestly, I'm a mother of three, so I have to learn how to balance my time perfectly. I need to know what I can do, what I can't do, my limitations, because as a business owner, you are your own, obviously your, your photographer, you are your social media manager, your accountant, you are whatever else you need to be, your, your marketer, all of this fun stuff. So you really need to understand that once you dive into this, it's not just taking photos and editing them. I wish it was that, and I wish it was that easy, but it's not just that. I think I take photos 10% is what my business is. 10% of it I'm taking photos. The other 90% I am doing so much other stuff that's not even photography related. It's just business stuff. Just know that it's a fun ride and it's so rewarding once you get to that point, but just know that you do have to work hard for it. It's not just let's dive deep into this and pray for the best. If you have any other questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with that. And I really hope that you look forward to all of these other videos. So those are my top 10 tips on how to grow your photography business. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see more videos. I will be posting every Monday and I hope you guys have a great day and I hope this helped you a lot.